I have done a number of streams on the Cosmic Desktop. Uh, the one from System76. If you've not used it yet, I would highly recommend it. It still has a number of quite annoying bugs, as I've shown in my streams, where my windows vibrate when I record them. Not on my desktop, only in the recording. And to the best of my knowledge, nobody's been able to properly replicate the problem. So I need to go and... I need to go and try see if it's maybe like multi-monitor. Like if it's multi-monitor, that at least leads them down to something. If it's AMD only, I wouldn't have a clue. Mate, look, maybe it's some regression in Mesa, but that doesn't make any sense unless it's like some weird approach that Cosmic only is taking and KDE is not for some reason. But to be fair, there was another one like that. Um, What was the option called? Uh... Direct scan out. Direct scan out is the thing where KDE isn't really using that heavily, but on Cosmic, uh, AMD GPUs would crash uh, past a certain version of Mesa. And I think, I want to say it's still a regression. I don't think it's been fixed upstream yet. Anyway, um, right now we're in Alpha 7. If you've not tried it yet, it's gotten into a pretty solid state. It's not perfect. There's lots of, there's lots of bugs still. Uh, it still requires hardware rendering so if you try it in a virtual machine make sure you enable hardware rendering otherwise it will immediately die um but i i do legitimately think it is maybe a cycle or two away from going into uh from going into beta now on that note so I talked about the alpha, and I was sent an email from, uh, from System76. Uh, let me see if I can find it. But I didn't, I didn't check out the details, because I didn't, I didn't, like, super care about the email that they sent me. Uh, I think Gaming on Linux made the mention of it as well. Gaming on Linux. Let me see. Where's Liam? Uh, let me go. Okay, maybe we go to the website. Gaming on Linux. So this was part of the of the write up, but it was just like a little note towards the bottom. So I just I just didn't even like take note. Maybe it's, wait, it was second page. I didn't really like take note of it. Uh, I should have grabbed the link for this one. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So, they have some new laptop coming out, the, whatever, the, the, the Serval WS. And then, like, at the bottom of that email, the thing that I didn't even pay attention to, apparently, uh, Cosmic is going to be entering beta phase soon. So... Soon is a very... It's a very ambiguous, very loose term, for a very good reason, because as we've seen from Carl before, mentioning dates doesn't go too well. Um, I do legitimately think... <sighs> do I think next release is going to be beta? I wouldn't be surprised if they pushed it into beta. Now... I do think there should be at least one more cycle. There's a few features I would like to see added before that happens. Bug fixes can go into beta. That's totally fine. At this point, there's not any, like, horrible crashes that are easy to encounter. This is the main thing. There's always going to be crashes in alpha and beta software. But beta should have a lot less in the obvious crashes like crashes where you're doing normal desktop functionality and something goes wrong and a lot of that stuff has been dealt with if i'm being if i'm not being optimistic i would say end of june i think end of june beta is very very likely now how long is it going to be beta going into full release that's really hard to say. I do think um, Cosmic has a lot of optimization issues right now. Like swapping workspaces, for example, there is a noticeable delay. It's like a second delay. And I have a feeling 
because this has been a problem in other desktops. So my home directory is on hard drive and I have a feeling it's something about writing data to a mechanical hard drive. I should move my configs to an SSD or at least the cosmic folder to an SSD just, just to test it because I'm... KDE's had a lot of problems where it's horribly unoptimized on hard drives. Cosmic, I would not be surprised if it has similar... Well, no, no. Cosmic has had problems of being horribly unoptimi uh, unoptimized on hard drives. Um, early on when you would change the... Well, change basically any setting. But a really easy one was changing the width of the window border. Every single time you change the value, it would write to a hard drive or it would write to the file and then reread the file and then like move it around the, the environment a bunch of times. And it wasn't just the hard drive thing. The hard drive thing certainly helped. But there was a bunch of other little optimizations at the same time that also smoothed things out. And I have a feeling... I have a feeling workspaces may be the exact same thing. My assumption is it's probably writing it to a file and then moving the file around and moving the data around a bunch and doing just weird, weird shit that like alpha software does. And then at some point, like two seconds later, it's like, oh yeah, you're on a new desktop. Yeah. <laughs> I think Cosmic has been a... I, I, I do want to talk to more of the engineers again. Um, I, I need to bring Victoria on the podcast at some point. I also want to bring Jeremy back on. Um, if anyone from the Cosmic team is listening here and would like to talk about the engineer experience of Cosmic, I would absolutely love to talk because I, I, I feel like this is a... This has been a big learning experience for everybody involved because this has been a Rust native desktop on a really new graphical toolkit from people who may have been involved in other desktops before. They've all, like, worked on GNOME to some extent, having the whole pop shell thing, and there have been patches sent upstream, but never building a desktop from the ground up. And I'd be very curious to know about a lot of the learning experiences people have had, a lot of the speed bumps along the way, a lot of the things which maybe were assumptions they had about how a desktop should work, which sort of fell apart as soon as you start seeing more general, wider user expectations. This is a problem a lot of things have, a lot of like software has, where for an individual, it works really well. And maybe for their friends, maybe for a small group around them, it's not perfect, but they understand it. And then you start giving it to regular users who have no idea who you are, who have no idea about your design ideas and your mentality going to the software, and they immediately break something. And I know there have been bugs in Cosmic like that. At least, like, that's the way it appeared to me. Um, actually, a really good example of this. Let's see if I can find it. I, I do need to provide more information to Carl because I think he's... I think he's entirely wrong. Um, yeah, so, okay, a bunch of people have upvoted this. So this is a thing that Carl has, uh, has added into the, uh, GitHub. So in Cosmic, for anyone just listening, uh, in Cosmic, actually in KDE. So in KDE, uh, there is an option, what's it called in KDE? Uh, focus, yeah, under window behavior, um, focus follows mouse, mouse precedence, and then delay focus set to zero milliseconds. So what happens here is when I've moved my mouse onto a different window, that window is automatically given focus, which is great because it means that I have to click anything. Awesome. Now, Cosmic also has this, has this feature. The problem is I don't think that they have used something like KDE or GNOME with the functionality enabled and it doesn't work the way you would ever expect it to. So on Cosmic, when you move the cursor over to a window, 
it doesn't just focus the window, it also raises the window. So KDE has those as two separate actions. You focus the window with your cursor by moving it over and click it, and then it raises the window. Why do we want this separation? Well, let's imagine for, <clears throat> let's imagine for a moment that you want to go and open a save dialog, okay? Save dialogs don't always take full control of the window, or maybe it's like a, a warning pop-up, okay? Something like that, which isn't going to take full control of the window, but is going to be a new window that spawns on top of the window. So in the cosmic context, if I were to move my cursor off of that window onto the window behind it, because uh, focus and raise are the same operation, putting my cursor on the window behind it would now put the pop-up behind that window, hiding the pop-up. This is really annoying. Whereas on KDE, if I move my cursor off of the pop-up, the pop-up is still going to be on top of everything, but the window behind it is going to have focus. So I can scroll through that window, I can type in that window, but until I click on the window, it is not actually going to be raised above the pop-up. This is a, a, a very specific situation, but it also makes a lot of sense when you have multiple overlapping windows on your desktop. Moving the cursor between windows and it immediately appearing above the window feels buggy. It feels broken. It works in a tiling context, but that's because windows are not overlapping. In a floating context, you need to have raising and focus as two separate operations. I will be posting a video in this thread as well. Um, I really, really hope that Carl does not make the wrong choice here and break how this feature works. Wait, wait. Oh, hold up. Did, has Have other people made duplicates? <laughs> wait, wait, I'm actually... Hold up. Okay, so this, this like, makes me even more right. So there are other people that have... that have provided the exact same report. So this is from XFCE, I guess. Yeah, so this is on XFCE, where... <laughs> You can customize the raise or you say, yeah, automatically raise windows when they focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the exact same thing I'm talking about with KDE, except XFC has like more sliders for more things. What's uh, what's this one on? Oh, this is also XFC. Wait. Is it the same person? Wait, I'm confused. Did I open the same link twice? Or did they make two issues wait i'm so confused wait 863 why do they have different names oh they must oh okay i i okay i see what happened here okay get fox mentioned it and then um then michael marked it as uh, as a duplicate right okay that makes sense awesome okay okay that makes a lot more sense then this is something Wait, so it was... Okay, it was on the Epoch, then it was in the Alpha, and then it's been removed. Okay, I, I'm, de I'm definitely going to talk to Carl about this. Like, this is, this is something where if the idea... So what Carl wants to do here is remove the zero delay to raise the window, which immediately breaks Focus Follows Cursor. Without without zero delay, focus follows cursor just feels laggy and feels buggy. So if you're not going to do zero delay, just remove the feature. Um, I, I I'm going to provide a video of KDE, and I hope I really hope that this is what like shows Carl how and like the other engineers like how this feature is supposed to work in a uh, in a non buggy state. <laughs> I think this is a problem that pretty much every desktop has. KD has this problem, Cosmic has this problem, GNOME especially has this problem, where the people using the desktop obviously are dogfooding it. But they're only dogfooding it. This leads to a situation where things that work sensibly on other desktops, 
basically you have to like rehave the discussion about how something should work, right? It's like, okay, let, let's imagine you have, you know, let's, let's imagine we have a door, okay? And let's say that three independent engineers architect what a door is. We don't have a definition of a door. So one person, they, they work out a door and they're like, okay, yeah, let's have these hinge things. Let's have like a handle that you turn. Let's make it out of some cheap material like wood and it'll like latch into the wall. Makes sense. Now, what you could do as these other engineers is take the idea of a door and then build off of that and just reimagine the door in a way that makes sense. Or... You could hear about this thing known as a door and then try to redesign the idea from first principles without taking any like context from the thing that was already done. So you end up rehashing the same discussions, redoing all of that same engineering work, and maybe you come up with a good result by the end. But a lot of work would have been saved by just going and looking at what the other project is doing. And that's the exact same thing here. This issue would be resolved maybe in like a day if people in System76 just went and try, like, try out how the feature works in KDE or in XSCE and like, oh, this works so much better than what we're doing. Just do that. And they have already done that with certain other things, like the idea of um, global shortcuts with X11 applications. Like, they just yoinked it from KDE. So I know that they are doing this in certain contexts, but in this specific one, for some reason, it's like, let's remove the feature instead of doing it correctly. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. I, I do hope that it is dealt with in a sensible way because I really want the feature. Uh, it's the, it is the only way I feel comfortable using a system. Every time I go to a system where I have to click a window to raise it, 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 it just feels weird. Especially in combination with doing things with, like, keyboard shortcuts. So I don't like to click the X in the top of a window. I'll usually do Super Shift Q and kill the window, or whatever it's bound to in that desktop. Usually I rebind it to Super Shift Q, though. Um... And if you have to then click on the window to make sure you're definitely focused, it, it, it just, it just, it causes more problems than it needs to, basically.